Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. As always, I hope that this podcast finds you well. This is the second and final part of the Q&A sessions that I thought you might be interested in hearing and hope that can help you and assist you on your journey. I hope you enjoy and look forward to hearing from you and speaking to you soon. To your health. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this second um, Ask Me Anything Q&A. Um, now, just to pre these other women, I've worked with over almost 100 women now personally, helped tens of thousands around the world. So it's awesome that you're here, that it's awesome that you've been part of this, this chat, you're on this journey, and I'm on this journey with you. So um, you had some questions, so I'm just going to get started on that. And I'm going to chat a bit more at the end. Um, so, yeah, so um, great to see all the questions that are there. Let me just see this here. Um, so you were asking initially, you're saying law of attraction, the secret book says to convert your negative feelings and emotions into positive. While you say that we should be comfortable with our negative emotions and feelings, Am I missing something here? From what I can gather, uh, I think what I'm hearing is your concern is that this law of attraction says that you should convert all your negative feelings into positive ones um, and that we should be comfortable with. Um, the, the way I look at it is we're human beings. We're not robots. We ha will have negative feelings. And my view is whilst there's a lot of new age psychology out there that's very well-meaning saying you shouldn't have any of those thoughts and turn everything into a positive. Of course, but we, we're not, that's just not realistic. So well, that's the aim, that's the end goal. But if you deny your emotions and your feelings to put what I think some people call like put a, um, some cream on top of a lump of mold, then you don't actually get to the core of what the mold is about and why it's not moving. So my view is if you have a negative feeling and, and this, this, this is, can come up a lot in your journaling. When you start to journal and you start on this end of all's pathway, you may start to be quite shocked, surprised, maybe even feel ashamed, embarrassed at how many negative thoughts and feelings that you have. That's perfectly normal and healthy and natural to have negative thoughts and feelings. What we look to do, obviously, is to be the observer of them. There's a difference. We are not our feelings and we are not our thoughts and we are not our emotions. So the, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is just notice them and not get caught up into the story and the narrative of them. So I think books like that, are, you know, their law of attraction is very well meaning, but it's very surface level stuff. And what I found um, in, in my experience working with so many women now is there's a reason why endometriosis has shown up in your body. There's a reason why your immune system is impaired and has been able to mop up the endometrial deposits. There's a reason why your nervous system is dialed up. There's a, there's a reason behind all of that. So no amount of positive thinking in inverted commas is going to get to the root causes of that. I am I would like to think I'm one of the most positive people in the world, but of course I'm going to have upsets, sadness, negativity, because I'm a human being. It's just unrealistic expectations to put upon yourself to be 100% positive 100% of the time. And if you've ever come across people like that, then that then they're suppressing their real feelings. What we're doing on this journey is we're, as I say, we're becoming the observer and we're noticing that we're feeling a bit sad or down or irritated or grumpy. That doesn't make us a bad person. What that does is it gives us messages. And this is where in the academy, you'll learn um, how to, to um, read the signs and the messages that your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions are giving you. You aren't 
your feelings, you aren't your emotions, you aren't your thoughts. And what we do is we learn to become the master of them by observing them. So I hope that answers that question. But there is a lot of kind of I'm a great believer of law of attraction, but with comp with reality, you know, interwoven in there. So um, I think sometimes people can just make statements and they can maybe make statements from a very well-meaning perspective without the deeper understanding of perhaps a woman who's, you know, been suffering for decades, you know, an insurmountable amount of pain and um, hasn't been able to sort of overcome that. So as I say, in my experience working with women with endometriosis, we just need to call it for what it is. It's not something that's a desired state. We don't desire to be negative. But once we start journaling and we notice these things, then it gives us information as to kind of, okay, that's not working. There's something happened the other day and I thought, oh gosh, I'm really quite negative about that. That's interesting information for me. But if I had ignored that and said like, let's just put a positive slant on it and there's a time for that, then that would have been me kind of trying to put a cream on top of a lump of mold, not listening as to why those thoughts and feelings came up. And again, we need to watch that there's not judgment upon the feelings that we have. Clearly, we don't want to stay stuck in those things forever. But as I say, there's normally a good reason and there's there's messages in behind that. And that's what you're going to be learning on the journey. Um, you're also saying right now I am completing the workbook wherein we have to flip our perceived imperfections. I often associate words like inefficient or slow learner or uncool, and I'm not sure how to flip them. Um, well, again, maybe something like inefficient, just to, I, I think what, what, what we can sometimes do, be very black and white with our feelings and our emotions and our thoughts and our judgment. We say, that's it. I'm very inefficient rather than saying, I'm trying to be if, as efficient as I can most of the time. So you can see that the change in tone and the change in focus. So if we're saying, rather than saying I'm inefficient, we just say, do you know what? I'm doing the best that I can and I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. So maybe this is where we, um, this is where, uh, again, we, we're all very similar personality types. We're trying to be uh, softer, we still want to achieve, we still want to accomplish, we still want to, to you know, to be the, the women that we are and be the best versions of ourselves. But if we beat ourselves up, it does nothing but make us feel yuck. So I would flip inefficiency by saying, okay, I'm trying to be as efficient as I can most of the time and, and kind of maybe phrase that. Um, even saying you're a, a slow learner, maybe just it, you take time, you 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 want to absorb the information more thoroughly. So you're not a, in a skim learner. There's no such thing as slow or fast or good or bad. There's normally shades of gray in there. So maybe just trying to think is just thing I like to take my time because people who in vertical commas are a slow learner, they, they maybe have different learning styles, maybe uh, need more pictorial, they need more uh, more right brain are than left brain, or it depends on the subject matter. If it's something you're really excited about, you're going to absorb that far more easily, more quickly uh, anyway. And who says what is the right time for learning and what is the wrong time? So just kind of flipping that around there and or uncool again, by whose definition, you know, maybe you are just cool for you. Maybe the, as far as you're concerned, you're cool enough. You know, who is it that gives all these judgments? And this is what we're starting to unpick. You know, what is our um our narrative or what has been conditioned or put in upon us that actually we're now starting to separate from in question so um i hope that helps um hope that helps on the flipping part but i think sometimes we can just be very black and white i remember reading a book when i was pregnant with my daughter it was almost 30 years ago now and um and it was one of those classic new age books it says if are you a failure or are you a success and then it opened up the book and said if you think if you've had this thought you're a failure and if you've had this thought, you're a success. And I thought, well, I've had both. You know, what? where does that leave me? And I remember feeling really depressed after reading it, thinking, oh, well, if I had had these thoughts, I must be a failure. But but it's it's not that black and white. And it's actually, we can end up being quite cruel to ourselves in that regard. So what we're looking to do is just widen our language about ourselves, um, explore, be, be more compassionate. And these things take time to learn. You're saying since endometriosis is affected by estrogen, can you please explain how endometriosis changes during perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause as a woman's hormones change during these times? Um, I'll answer that question first. And you say, and any special considerations women in perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause should consider when going through these phases of life? Well, it's a great question. I think of old, it would have been very kind of, you know, in a very sort of clinical terms, uh, menopause is, is obviously when um, 
the, the woman's uh, hormones production start to reduce or they're supposed to reduce. So because obviously she goes past childbearing age per se um, and her estrogen levels drop and her progesterone levels drop. That is theoretically in a very simple term what menopause is, whether it's, it's peri or post or menopause itself. Uh, it's interesting since I've been on this journey because everything would seem to be so very black and white before and I realized how many shades of gray there are. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, I work with so many women across different ages, backgrounds, skin color, religion, culture, you name it. And, and the fundamentals are the same. Now in our very polluted society, polluted world and societies, there is excess amount of estrogen. Now, um, that seems to be the main problem as, as far as I'm concerned is if you've watched the webinar, endometriosis is an estrogen dominant condition. So it's excess estrogen and that comes about from a number of different factors, excess stress from cortisol and adrenaline, which affects uh, increases estrogen and depletes progestion. You've got things like xenoestrogens, which is foreign estrogens, like in our environment, like uh, SLSs, parabens, chemicals, all that kind of stuff that, that actually encourage the growth of estrogen in, in the body. And then you've got phytoestrogens, which are kind of natural estrogens in the environment that many women like, uh, like soy and stuff don't, don't know about. So nowadays you've got an excess amount of estrogen, but the problem is whether it's peri, during menopause or post is there isn't enough, um, there's far too much estrogen, which needs to be lowered because that can cause all sorts of issues. And you, you've heard that stories with uh, women going on um, HRT and things and developing breast cancer, um, but there's not enough progestion as well. And, and the reason you're, the, the progestion is lowered anyway, um, is because there's excess estrogen. Estrogen and, and um, progestion, they, they, they're supposed to be quite balanced. But what I found is the vast majority of women have such little progestion or none. Now, it's not just a quick case of going and buying progestion cream and slapping it all on because you've got other problems that could be triggered by that. You could be dormant estrogen receptors that would be reactivated by that as well. So this is why the academy is structured in such a way that we have to address it through the five Ps. We have to look at what might be estrogenic and causing stress in the body from produce, products, property, people, and past. And that's why we do things very systematically so that the feedback that you're getting from your body, from the education, from the, from the information, and from us as a team, you're able to integrate and get a good sense of it. So, um, so yes, they're theoretically, because we're not robots, you know, everyone's slightly different. And what, what I find is if women are showing up with estrogen, um, estrogen dominant conditions like endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, fibroids, there's too much estrogen in there anyway. And even going through the, the, the menopause, the progestion is already low, so it's likely not to go much lower. And the estrogen might drop a little bit, but it's unlikely. But the key thing is, is the symptoms that are showing up in the body, irrelevant of what stage a woman's at. So I hope that helps. Um, and when you see any special considerations, yes, you should be addressing all these five Ps. It should be part of a support system who understands them, especially if it, this condition has shown up in their body. Um, I, as I mentioned on the webinar, we are eHisps, exquisitely highly intuitive, sensitive people. We uh, normally it's shown up, in my belief, endometriosis shows up uh, for women who. Um, have got, you know, um, deeply kind of perhaps childhood loss or mistreatment or um, all sorts of issues, perhaps from that perspective, and equally have had a very uh, highly tuned uh, nervous system, which we need to be looking at because it, we don't just look at body parts or just hormones. We're looking at, at the whole woman. And this is why I get the success that I do. So it's irrelevant of what stage of a woman's life we're at. We, we're, we're still dealing with uh, the woman as a whole and her whole body as well. In fact, I had uh, my group, one of my group calls earlier today, and we we're talking about thyroid issues and, and how to support your body naturally to get it back into balance. Because ultimately the aim with us all is to be in balance, whether it's in our life and our relationships in our body or mind or soul or spirit, it, the aim is to achieve balance. And for everybody that's slightly different, but there's some core principles in which, you know, we, we work to so that you can actually understand uh, why. And then you get this feedback loop with yourself and of course with the team as well. So you're saying what strategies have you found useful for women in pain, TENS machine, uh, CB oil, castor oil? 
Um, I mean, to be honest, by the time, you know, within a good sort of six to eight weeks of women working with me, most of their pain is reduced anyway. Uh, women have their have their own, they might have a hot water bottle. I certainly don't recommend CBD oil. Um, there have been some studies that, that claim to increase estrogen, so it's not something I would recommend anyway. Uh, sometimes castor oil packs and things, as long as it's organic, um, castor oil can be helpful. But to be honest, it's not something that we focus on much because the whole point and purpose of the academy is to, to get women out of pain as quickly as possible. And we do that through a very structured process so we can identify pretty early on as to why that pain is there. Um, so you're also asking, could you speak about how a woman can discover what supplements work well for her body and which ones have adverse effects? Um, great question. Again, this is all covered in great detail in the End of Oss Academy. And uh, what I have found is women with endometriosis have a very, very sensitive digestive tract. Uh, very sensitive to, to many supplements. And again, I go, I've done all the hard work so that you don't have to go and do trial and error. And that is explained in, in great detail in the academy. I give you very specific uh, supplements that I've tried and tested myself. I don't recommend anything that hasn't come through this body first. I have not had anyone have any reactions to any of the ones I recommend um, just because they're so good and they're so great. So again, you would get access to information if you're offered a place in the academy. Um, you see any trusted resources you can recommend in recent video you mentioned ashwagandha um, as one that might increase estrogen absolutely and cause endometriosis flare-ups I find it really difficult to put pieces together of what professional holistic and medical are recommending and how it affects the body and this is exactly why I created the Endoboss Academy because there is so much information out there isn't there it's not the information isn't the problem it's the right knowledge applicable to you is the issue so this is why I have the success that I do that I you know that but this is why I do what I do, because I've done all the hard work. You know, you, you can't go to a nutritionist or naturopath, functional medicine or a doctor if they haven't had endometriosis and put it into remission. Because we are bodies. We are different, uh, a good different. But we're, our bodies are acutely sensitive. So the problem is, is a lot of this is trial and error. And this is why it took me so long to kind of get well, because I was following everybody else, what they were telling me to do, but they'd never had endometriosis. They didn't have a clue. And so this is why I got into the note. And this is why I had women reaching out to me after reading my book and saying, can you help? And this is why I, I created everything the way that I did. And as I say, I keep saying this, but it's worth remember, uh, repeating. It's why I get the success. And it's not even just you know, within this uh, six to 12 months, it's way beyond that as well. I think I mentioned in the um, webinar, uh, one of my former students, Stacy, six years down the line, and she's still out of pain. Because the thing is, there's so much information, you just get overwhelmed. You know, you just see this person saying this and this person getting that. I had somebody trying to sell me some, some wonderful um, uh, sort of macro greens type thing. And, and, and of course, it's, you know, and I was like, okay, great, but I knew what exactly, and I teach you what to look for, what to know whether it's good or bad, or whether it's, you know, you're going to have potential flare ups with these things or not. I, I give you all of that information education. My aim is to increase your awareness, give you the information and education related to women with endometriosis so that you can keep inspired and lead you to full empowerment and a pain free body. So, this green thing that they were saying, they had wheat grass in it. You know, we can't eat wheat in any shape or form. I teach you how to become a detective, to, to know what to look for in the ingredients and how, what to avoid. And this is something that obviously, you know, is drip fed over a period of six months so that you can integrate it. In, and of course, you get handouts, downloads, and top tips and things as well. Uh, so, it's not surprising you're finding it difficult because if you're anything like I was, you're going around to all these different people saying, help me, but they can't help you to the degree that you need because they don't understand endometriosis. They've not had it themselves to understand our bodies. And I've had people say to me, well, that's not possible that you'd be sensitive to that. And I'm going, well, it is possible because I am sensitive to that. So this is why, as I say, I have everything structured in the way that I do so that it's not overwhelming and so that you can understand the, the background behind it. I don't know if you remember, uh, Laura from Uganda had said, um, she was just blown away by by all the information that she was given because she fully understood everything and why I was saying things that I was saying and how it related uh, to her body. Invariably, there's a whole list, a whole arm's length of other symptoms and other other things that have been going on in the body: thyroid issues, irritable bowel syndrome, um, cysts or fibroids or um, migraines. It can be a, a whole range of of other conditions. 
Um, normally women, again, will through their journaling and through the education system and the support will reach conclusions that by themselves as to you know when and many i would say probably 98 percent of women are off all medications antidepressants and everything by the end of the program because they've understood why the body has reacted in the way that it has and they've you know they, they've reached that conclusion so um i hope that answers your question uh, at the end of the day, your thyroid is just not in isolation. Normally, thyroid uh, issues, which I know I've had and uh, many women have had, is for, for a number of different factors, which you'll learn about, which I educate you on. You know, for example, fluoride, you know, just draws out iodine from the thyroid. And we need to sort of look at uh, iodine and stuff as well. But I give you all the all this so you don't have to go and figure that out yourself. Um yeah, there's so much information out there. What are trusted sources to find known causes of inflammation? It's here. This is this is why I've done what I've done. There is not one thing that you can go to. The problem is there's wide ranging of, of information that nobody's really got it specifically apart from me. And this is why I get the success that I do. And when I talk about success, I'm talking about women understanding their bodies in a whole new way, understanding their pain, understanding why this is happening. And remember, we're looking at all the five Ps. This is why I do the 21 day challenge and the deep dive that I do, because it's not just the physical, it's the, the emotional and spiritual side as well. And what I mean by that is that everything's interconnected. If you're in a constant state, of, of wired, tired, and stressed, that is obviously dialing up your cortisol and your adrenaline. And what we're looking to do is, you know, address those stress factors whilst looking at the, the physical elements of, the, of the, the produce and the products and the property, whilst we're looking at people in past as well. Um, you're saying it's not too personal. You mentioned thyroid issues as a diagnosis you had in the past. Is it a current? It is a current diagnosis for me. Any guidance on how to resolve this issue would be greatly appreciated. Well, as I say, this is something that is covered in the Enderboss Academy as well. I originally was diagnosed with an overactive thyroid, but when I look back, of course, I had you know these issues because I was in a highly stressful, and I didn't know it then, uh, very toxic relationship. I just moved from Scotland down to England. My daughter was going off to school. There was a whole lot of different things. And I signed up to the local doctors and they said, oh, you need to go on these pills. Then I didn't question doctors. I just did what I was told. They put me on carbismol. And, um, and then it turned out that, that my thyroid went under active thyroid. And um, any long the short of it is I'm not on any medication. I'm not on any painkillers, drugs, I've had no surgeries. I'm on everything is in balance for me. And again, I show you how to, but yeah, so I have no thyroid issues. I have no bowel issues. I have no breast tenderness. I have no pain in my periods. I, it's like a two day period and it's so light, it's barely noticeable. I have no clots. I have no cysts. I have no adenomyosis. Remember adenomyosis is when the, the doctors are saying, right, you need to have a hysterectomy now and, and whip everything out. So um, yeah, thyroid's all back into, because ultimately what we do through the academy is teach you how to, um, tune into your body and understand what it's saying and, and equally look at these known elements that we know are inflammatory. So I hope that helps. Um, so I think in, these things in isolation, the problem is with the medical field, it's amazing on accident and emergency and transplants, but when you're dealing with a very complex condition like endometriosis, there are invariably other conditions, other issues associated with it. But you can't really look at these things in isolation. You have to look at the whole picture. And this is where we're looking at all these different areas of you've seen already just by paying attention for 21 days to your feelings and emotions, widening, maybe getting breakthroughs, widening the comprehension, understanding of what's going on inside can be, can be really uh, helpful. But we've only just, just scratched the surface. So uh, saying my dominant issue is haste. I always feel I need to finish this quickly. And then there are so many other things to do. And because of that, my body's mostly agitated. Sometimes it's hard to focus uh, at, um, at journaling and meditation or doing assignments, how to calm myself down in day-to-day -day activities. Well, I mean, my, my sense is from, from the way that you're you're talking is is there's a very strong perfectionist inside of you a part of you that's a strong driver strong perfectionist and and that's causing perhaps a, a lot of background anxiety and stress inside um so the first thing is you've noticed it i always think it's great if, if you you know you're 
50 uh, percent of the of uh, of over overcoming these things is noticing that you have it noticing that there is haste there noticing that, that that you are feeling agitated i would encourage you very strongly to write about it just to keep writing i wonder why i feel so stressed why did i feel i have to finish everything what would happen if i didn't finish everything or what happens if i did it slower just start to become curious and questioning in a nice way not in a harsh way as to kind of what's coming up for you and as i say my sense is you've just got a very strong driver pusher perfectionist parts to you that um that that has you know whipped up your nervous system that's why there's maybe anxiety and stress there so explore that more in your journaling and see if that helps uh you're saying i'm chronically constipated and bloated even when i even uh, when i eat only fruits i feel i need a gut cleanse before my body can absorb any nutrients what is the best way to do a gut cleanse would you recommend when some trusted sources practitioner website we can think i am ready to practice any extreme dieting if need be Again, I cover this in great detail. In fact, there's a bit of a joke in the academy where we're, we're talking about bowel movements. Now, there's a reason you're constipated, and I would, wouldn't recommend doing anything like a gut cleanse right now. My, uh, in my experience, you know, if you're constipated, there's a number of different reasons for it. You maybe don't have enough digestive enzymes. You're maybe not drinking enough fluids. It could be that you're very stressed so that there's uh, the, the, the colon has just got really tightened. There's a number of different reasons for that. Again, there's a home test that I get you to do to check your, your stomach acid, your digestive enzymes. And again, anyone who's, I mean, I used to be terribly constipated. I was lucky if I went to the toilet once or twice a week those in those days i mean it's just awful now i mean you're supposed to go like a baby two to three times a day and that's what all my students why we kind of joke about we have our um our our, our um bell movement charts and stuff where we're, we're just checking how many we're having and it's amazing how many women start constipated and then within a you know a good couple of weeks couple of months that you know we're talking say oh I had two number fours today or I had blah blah so again there's a reason why there's I wouldn't recommend if you're inflamed or in pain right now that you uh, think about doing a gut cleanse what I would suggest to you to do is fruit sometimes again for a lot of my women and I'm the same I can't eat a lot of fruit because of the of the sugars in there and that can sometimes cause a little bit of inflammation in, in the intestinal tract uh, because of the sugars now even though they're natural sugars they can still cause a bit of irritation normally if women are constipated at the very beginning it's because they're really super stressed or maybe they're not you know getting enough fluid because again if you're if you're eating regularly and you're relaxed and you're drinking plenty um you know, little and often, then that can help too. But I mean, you know, if you're stuck indoors, if you're stressed about COVID or there's things going on, constipation can come about. But I wouldn't recommend doing that right now. That is not something that I recommend any of my women do this early on because their intestinal tract is inflamed. Again, if you're on any painkillers or any antibiotics or any drugs, they're going to cause constipation as well. Um, and then you're saying, I'm trying to take serapeptase. 80k units per day i get a mild headache when i take it throbbing sensation or pain in my temple is it a substitute it seems to be the most important enzyme for a woman with endo um i'm kind of i've, I've not heard of anyone having that reaction before my, my first feeling is um is it the capsules or the tablets because i, I, I always recommend the capsules to to my women um i would even just it, I've not heard of anyone having that, but that doesn't mean to say that it's not those tablets. If, if it's a, a tablet or a capsule, what I would suggest you do is, is not have them for a couple of days and then have half of one. And um, so you could, if it's a capsule, you just you know, uh, open it up and put it on a piece of paper, cut it in half, and then maybe just put a wee drop in some water and swallow it down. And just notice, notice what else is going on around about you. Um, I can't imagine... My, my, either that or maybe it's a slight detox reaction that you're having that, or that it's causing. Uh, also, you know, be, be mindful of, you know, is there any tension in your neck, head and shoulders? Um, so you might want to experiment a wee bit more with that and see, I mean, that they are the best quality brand. And, and my only thinking is it might be a very slight detox reaction. So I would stop them, leave a good couple of days to a week notice if that headache in the temple because that to me is is is, is kind of um tension headaches you know if you're talking you're you've got um, the the mild headache and and um 
or pain in the temples here. That, that's normally eye strain, tension in the head, neck, head and shoulders. You know, perhaps you're maybe being hunched over, things like that. So again, maybe just stop, see if, if it comes back and then maybe start at half a dose and try that for a couple of days. Or maybe try half a dose for one day, leave it a day and then try another half dose for a second day. And again, just slowly see my body was so acutely sensitive. I had to take quarter doses of things when I first started because my body was very sensitive. So it may be just a slight detox reaction. Um, if it was an allergic reaction, I would imagine that it would be, um, you know, you would feel it in your intestinal tract. It just feels like more tension than anything else. So maybe just check that out. And then lastly, you're saying how to overcome the feeling that I need to achieve something before I can love myself. I think what, what I'm interpreting that to mean is that, yeah, and again, this is very, very common. Women with endometriosis are high achievers, strong perfectionists, pushers, driver parts. And, and we've, we've always, again, I'm generalizing here, but the vast majority of women that, that I work with, and that's why I love working with women like that is they are just, you know, phenomenal women, uh, you know, desperate to, to get well. And they want to achieve, they want to accomplish because it's this it's old saying, isn't it? If, if I do enough, I'll be enough. And um, at some point growing up, you've, you've either had the message or you've taken on the belief. I think it was um, Alfred Alder that the psychologist said that at the age of 10, we make a decision about our lives and how the world, how the world looks. And at 10, we don't really have a huge perspective, do we? But maybe at 10, you said, right, I've got to be perfect. I've got to achieve this, this, and this, and then I'll be accepted. Then I'll be worthy. Then I'll be able to love myself. But of course, it's like chasing the end of the rainbow, isn't it? You just never quite get there. And I've been there myself where I thought, if I can just do this, and if I can just achieve that, and it's exhausting, it's draining. And, and what, what you're looking to do is just acknowledge that, that there is that really strong pusher, perfectionist driver part and that you feel that there is a comparison of worth to an internal worth to external worth or validation or recognition. And again, our societies around the world encourage that, don't they? They encourage that you, uh, you're nothing until you achieve this. So that kind of feeds into that narrative. But what we're looking to do is just develop, and this is, goes into great detail in the academy, whilst working on everything else, is just kind of acknowledge where we're at the very fact you're here the very fact that you've done you know you're 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 doing what you're doing is enough you know you are enough as you are and putting this condition in remission is a massive accomplishment and to do so we have to learn to listen to our body listen to our emotions listen to our feelings uh have that sort of it's almost like a, a snake taking off its old skin. We have to kind of wrestle and fight with, with the old skin that, that we've had for, for too long now. There's another analogy I use is like when we were little girls, we'd have these beautiful little pink shoes that we just loved. And then, of course, they got tatty and old and we outgrew them. But but we, we, but we can't get our feet into them anymore. And it's kind of like the where you're at at this particular point, something inside you saying, you know, we want to, to be, uh, behave in a different way, be a different way, achieve different things. We want to be accepting of ourselves. We want to be pain-free. Your body's in pain right now because it's trying to communicate with you. So it's not just a case of right, waking up one morning and saying, I love myself. There's a reason that's that's being uh, prevented. There's, a, there's obviously messages you might have got growing up as to who you needed to be to be loved or what love meant. Maybe love meant high achievement and if you didn't get the high achievement then you didn't get the love so again these are the kind of things that we very slowly very gently unpack as well so that is me on the questions um maybe the last time i'm going to be doing this academy uh this year i'm going to be the last opportunity for you to get to work with me uh and me and my team in this way to really put the spotlight and the torch on to kind of what's going on inside your body but also keep working on the emotional component too and this is why um, it's so important. It's why I do the 21 day challenge in the way that I do it. And I do, you know, other programs as well, like embracing emotions, but the academy is where we, we bring all that together and we start 
very practically addressing what are the root causes of the pain and inflammation and what it is that who who do you need to become to be comfortable and and be self-accepting and, and love yourself in that regard really limited number of spaces i keep my numbers quite small so that you can get that degree of personalization that everybody seeks and needs but um but that is me for tonight keep looking after yourselves uh know that your bodies are amazing given the right environment and the right conditions and the right ingredients. And remember, there are so many people out there that are very, very well-meaning, but they don't understand endometriosis. This is why my coaches are, are women who had the condition put it into remission. This is why I do what I do, because I understand that. And this is why I think I said in the webinar, you can't commercialize what is personalized. I have a main core of what it is that I that works is tried and tested now and then you get that degree of personalization because every woman is slightly different to help you understand what's at the root cause because this is an important journey and then it's working on where do you want to be you don't want to stay in pain what what, what is your ambitions your dreams your aspirations for your life what is the purpose because it's as much there's so much more out there there's it's a whole bigger concept of, of life out there and i believe that every woman who has the condition it's the body's kind of wake up call to say stop we've got to pay attention here things need to change and of course we seek change and fear change in equal measure so this is why we need to learn how to to hear the body so that we can heal the body hear it so we can heal it but anyway take care and keep up the great work and i will speak to you all soon bye Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.